Okay, let's get started. We're going to be talking about the qualities of salt, the necessity for it in your body. Where does it come from? What are these formations from? I have a salt inhaler, Himalayan salt inhaler, and you, you just take a couple of hits off of this every now and then, and it really clears your lungs up. And people that were in salt mines, they hid out in there in World War II that had respiratory issues they cleared them up by hiding out in the salt mines because that salt all of those biological salts not the processed salts the processed salts forget about it the biological salts have all the minerals and metals in them and you're going to see this in great detail so let's get started okay my friends i am going to discuss salt deeply. This just came out a couple hours ago and it's Himalayan versus Celtic sea salt. Dr. Eric Berg is absolutely fabulous doctor. He is as knowledgeable as anybody I've ever seen and he is going to be discussing the difference between these and other salts and why are they necessary and how do they affect biology and what is the you know what's the chemistry behind it and what kind types of systems in the body are affected by too much of this and not enough of that and how your diet and what you drink and so forth and how you exercise affects the amount of salt that you need and he talks about coffee it's just it sounds to me like for every cup of coffee you need one teaspoon of salt it it, it, it takes that away from you i mean you're there's a lot of salt in you a lot of salt in all of us and that really floored me i don't know i gotta look into that but he's he's one of the top guys i've ever seen so Let's let's look into my study on salt that I have been doing because I have a particular interest. I know somebody has a salt issue and I'm trying to look into it. So and I'm looking into it deeply. Here, here's this. Here's the panel of stuff we'll be looking at in a second. This is all about salts. And these are all a lot of different salts. These are all different salts. Now here's the Himalayan pink. This is the best as far as I'm concerned. But all of these other salts have certain characteristics based upon where they developed. And what, what, what did they develop from? Why did these salts just all of a sudden pop up? And when I show you where they reside in places like this, <laughs> this is, that's pork ribs. This is the salt mine. It's, it's biological. I know it sounds insane, but it is true. This is nothing more than biological layers of tissue, and they're taking out the black blood, which is the the uh, magnetite blood, the red blood. They don't care about that stuff. is soft and it won't break your teeth. This stuff will. But anyway, the rest is all salt. I mean, it's all body tissue, and um, I mean, it's all over the place. It's all over the world. So. It's something we, I can show you why certain, you know, and this is nothing more than body tissue too. And what I was just talking about before doing a test, it, you know, I'd like to see how body tissue can turn into salt. How long does it take? Can you do it quickly? What's the conditions? Is there, what's the pHs? What is the temperatures? What, is there any electricity involved? There's, there's some chemistry going on here, and as far as I'm concerned, it's all related to chemistry. Well, look at this. Look at these. These are, these are veins or, or, or arteries running through this guy's body when he was a creature, alive. You see the different colors? Those are all transition metals. And why are the different colors in the different layers? Well, I do understand that. Um, well, anyway, there's a lot I understand about it now that I didn't before, but there's still a lot to, to be experimented with and that requires the little chemistry I was talking about it requires pH up and down and then you need some body parts to but they have to have the blood in them they have to have everything in them when you start and then try it with different acids and salts and you know about a lot of you know alkaline solution versus acid and so forth and you know, water, and, you know, I don't know, you get, it's, 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 this is where it gets into be 
fun <laughs> if you want to play around with that I just don't you know but you need some dead body parts to do it because you have to have it just like it would be a guy fell over dead and then somehow whatever the process was there was a great flood that caused all these things to die at the same time I know it sounds insane it was all written about in history as far as I'm concerned all that stuff is true and this just supports it all but this is, isn't this interesting? I find this fascinating myself. And if it can help you to be healthy, here's a, the Himalayan salt is the most alkaline food item on the planet. Well, what does that mean? Well, it has a lot of potassium, sodium. This is the stuff, is the alkaline side. The acids are over here. But in between, you have all of those different metals that I talked about. These are transition metals. This is, this is literally your blood. Plus, you have some other stuff in the blood. This is the most important stuff you have in your body. These are all those transition metals that I showed you a minute ago. Now, you see this? These are all these different metals in the plasma. But also, you have got lithium, beryllium. you got every, oh, everything, basically everything, but mostly... It's the transition metals that do the work in your, in your biological moving things in your body. Transition means they give and take because they have oxidation states, which means they're basically unstable. They want to work with something else if the other thing wants to work with it. It will give up and it will take on. And that's what the transition is. And they're, these are all the different colors. And you just saw all these different colors. Uh, and they're all over. I mean, this isn't just here. There's a lot of different colors in a lot of different places. Look at this one here. Look at that. Now, and they call this potash. And it's, mostly it's got a lot of potassium in it. And a lot of this stuff down in this side. And it's just giant creatures. That's all I can say. All right, these colored salt formations are all over the world, and all they are is different concentrations of transition metals that are collected in different layers of tissue because those layers of tissue had some affinity to attract that specific transition metal. Okay, I know I started talking about this is all about salt. Well, there's a lot more to this, too. This is about history and the ancient past and how these things form. And Bill Bennett the other day on TV was saying, history and geology are the same thing, basically. <laughs> He's all upset because people are starting to understand mud fossils and they're saying, wait a minute, th this is not right. The geological record doesn't stand up. And all of these things are just wrong. And he's, he was on some news show saying, this education system's gotten out of control. They're teaching anything they want. They have to get back to a standard, say everybody has to believe this to be educated. That's just not true. None of this stuff was right. I'm sorry, it's just a fact. Now, I'm going to get into extremely deep detail about the chemistry. We're going to get into geek land with this because I want to show you how to try to preserve and create some of this. All right, you could take some pork ribs, but only you see the problem is you, you can't have it processed yet at all. It can't be drained of fluids or anything. It's got to be like roadkill. And then you take a piece of it and then you're going to have to do some chemistry with it and see, is it the acids? Is it the salts? Is it the water content? Is it cycling through there continuously? Is it, it's, it, it's got to be a lot to do with the blood. It's got to be a lot to do with the blood. The blood has all that chemistry in it, as I showed you. So anyway, that's going to be a very long, detailed thing. But this, I, I have all the details on this about the Himalayan salt, the Celtic salt, different potassiums and sodiums in them because as far as I'm concerned the Himalayan is is probably going to be the best deal going but they all have their own properties and it would be interesting to see what exactly is the chemistry of all of these and maybe we can draw something from that how they were created but the pink is is basically it's blood it's blood and the the connective tissues, I guess, turn to, you know, the white salt part. I really don't know, to be honest with you. But I can show you this. 
Here it is right here. This is, I showed you the transition metals. Maybe I didn't. Here they are right here. These are aqueous, which means they're in water. They float around in water, which is your body. It's made just nothing but water. These are aqueous little metals. And they float through your body. And these charges say, I, I will give you a couple of electrons. You give me a couple of this, and I'll give you a couple of that. And we'll swap. We'll transition. And, and that's how it moves everything through your body. And when you die, your tissues in a correct conditions, I know there's no question whatsoever, they can become solidified using these transition metals. Now, opals are something that is saturated with blood. They come from, from um, primarily from Australia, which is like one gigantic blob of blood. Ayers Rock, Uluru, is a heart. And I'm going to do a video on that one. I've done that before. Uluru is a heart. And the whole place is just one big gigantic bloody scab. The whole Australia, it's unbelievable. That redness is not just red for nothing. Now, this is one of the Yoa opals, nuts. They call them Yoa nuts. And they're just opals. But they're opals of organs. This was a heart. Now, why do we have all these exact colors here? And exact colors here and here and here and here and here. And, you know, it's what it is. It's called nucleophilic substitution. And what happens is you have things that are looking to become stable. They're not stable. They're, you're, nothing, not a single piece of your body, not one single cell in your body is stable right now. It's continuously transitioning between taking on and giving up stuff and oxygen and all of these different things, glucose and so forth, are just continuously moving through your tissues. Your tissues are not stable, not even the tiniest bit. So you die. What does the tissues do? They say, hey, 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 hey. anybody out here can make me stable. And they find a blue transition metal, and it is probably a very, very complex set of little metals that come in and they take over this exact type of tissue, whatever it was. I don't know, but it's these are the heart strings, I believe, and it's the ventricle walls and the heart strings that pump your heart, and um, and of course the other ones have their own different, you know, molecular structure so it's going to take these different little greenish looking things and you see you got a whole batch of different things going on right in the same spot they're all different it's like organelles or something i don't know what's going on in there or maybe this is just a big pile of blood i don't know this is the plasma where it is nothing in it and this heart was laying like this side was up and this side was down and that's why the metals because of specific gravity have collected down here we, we're going to go through all of this in, in extreme detail but i just want to prep you for the fact that this salt is extremely important to my research on this bacteria and enzymes and sickness and health i mean it, it, this is this is a revel revelation i mean i knew this was important but i didn't realize until i saw this uh, dr berg today absolutely stunning to listen to what he had to say and i didn't know that and again i have interest in finding out about salt and how it affects the human body and it does in a huge huge amount so this would be very good for you to watch, but stay tuned for the next um, video because we're going to get deep into all of these different formations and all of these salts that are all over, bloody salts, and um, all these different, what is this? What's going on here? I know, I, I can understand this stuff pretty well now, and it's because geology is biology, all right, and just like Bill Bennett said, History is geology. So let's get into all of this stuff and a little of the true history of our world. And what created all these things? Nobody's ever been able to, they look at this and they say, ooh, who knows? This is on the Iranian labor news. Musa Ahamadahish. It's all salt. And it's eroded away and left whatever that's from. And here's the interstitium layer right here. Those are those little balls. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's all biology. 
All right, I love you all. This is, uh, I'm excited, I'm telling you, all right, and I can't hide it. <laughs> all right, thank you. We'll just muddle through this.